Okay, we're live. Hello, okay. everyone, and welcome to another. Do I turn it back on now? You can turn it on, Coach. Yeah, sure. There he is. Welcome to another edition of the Coach's Corner on the Fitter and Faster Swim platform. I'm your host, as always, Mike Murray. Today, we're thrilled to introduce you all to a living legend in our sport, one of the most influential coaches in history, Coach John Urbanchek. Coach Urbanchek has served as a national team advisor for the last two years with USA Swimming, in addition to being named to seven USA Olympic team coaching staff positions. In 2017, Coach Urbanchek received the International Olympic Committee Lifetime Coaches Award. Coach Urbanchek is the epitome of a Michigan man, first as an alum graduating in 1961, and second as the head coach at the University of Michigan from 1982 to 2004, winning an NCAA championship in 1995 with arguably, in my mind, one of the best men's teams ever and leading Michigan to 13 Big Ten Conference Championships. Coach Urbanchek also has the unique distinction of winning an NCAA title as both an athlete and a coach, which is a perspective that no doubt served him well in developing relationships with his swimmers over the course of his career. One of the things that I wanna remind our viewers today is if you stay to the end of the webinar with Coach Urbanchek, we're gonna be giving away one Carbon Core FX racing suit by Arena. And with that, I'm going to keep it moving here, Coach. It is my distinct yeah. pleasure to introduce one of my coaching heroes, Coach Urbanchek. Welcome to the Coach's Corner. Thanks, Mike. <laughs> I wish I could run eight-minute miles with you like you did this morning. Today, I, I, I'll tell you, today was our fastest. 12-minute miles is, is A-plus for me right now. But anyway... I used to do it at your age. I used to do it at seven, eight. <laughs> no mas, no mas. No more. You know, the first time I met you, I was visiting North Baltimore Aquatic Club uh, as a young coach. My my head coach has sent me there to learn. And I was kind of following Paul Yetter and Bob Bowman around. And the ASCA clinic happened to be in D.C. that weekend. And they turned around the corner and they said, and coach, this is John Urbanchuk. And I was blown away. That's the first time we ever met. Well, that was coincident because what happened is, is um, my daughter lives in Baltimore, and uh, quite often I'm, I'm in Baltimore. And if I'm in Baltimore, you will see me in a workout at a.m. and p.m. I spend all my time in the pool. It's one one good way to get out of the house when there's too many people in there. And and so it just happened to be uh, just one of those uh, years when it ended up there. But there's a better better news about it. Uh, I met Michael in 1996, right after the Olympics. Immediately, I believe now, we were invited to go to the White House. I said, oh, heck, if I'm going to the White House, let's spend some time in Baltimore with my dog. Back to Baltimore, and I showed up at workout. This was like way before your time. This is back in 1996. That's about eight years, seven years before you were there, before we met. And um, Larry Stevens, who was to be the coach at the time, said, John, uh, you might want to take a look at uh, Whitney, which is, which is uh, Michael's older sister. She actually, she did, did, make, she did not make the Olympic team because she had some medical Back issues. issues. Back issues, yes. But anyway, so I met Michael there, 11 years old, uh, right after the, man, the senior workout. They had the age group workout, so I had a chance to uh, sit down and talk to Murray. Uh, Bob Bowman was not in the picture yet, so I can always hold this up on top. <laughs> I, I should have had Michael there before you did, but I'm glad it turned out the way it turned out. So anyway, I was part of the, the Baltimore system for all these years. So this is my story. Go ahead. Yeah, I remember that day like it was yesterday. Hey, Coach, a lot of us remember those dominant University of Michigan teams in the 90s. Can you talk about what the competitive atmosphere was like on the pool deck with the likes of Tom Dolan, Eric Namesnick, Mike Barrowman, and Gustavo Joe Borges? I mean, that must have been just so fun to go to work every day. And, and it, it part and parcel leads us into our conversation on energy systems. But what, would his, what was it like in the 90s on the pool deck uh, at the Canham Matacorium? 
first of all, I remember that real well. The memories are great. <laughs> so, you know, when you end up having a decades of an unbelievable program, yeah, I don't think you can sustain it forever. And, and sometimes all you're going to have is the memories. But I'm glad you uh, witnessed that. Uh, and I think uh, it's got to be a, a great history for that. And when I arrived to Michigan back in, the fifth, in 1957, when I started in Michigan, we had seven NCAA championships by then. The Mad Man was, was the coach. And the Mad Man's coach, my coach, Gus Steger, and Gus Steger, while I was in Michigan, we had, were able to win four NCAA championships uh, out of five years I was there. I was there for five years because I flunked out of the engineering school and what became ineligible because when you lost your scholarship, lost your scholarship, or I grew up in school, so pretty much I almost missed a year from that. But, but anyway, Michigan was great for me. So yeah, the program just evolved very slowly. Okay, right? Right. After, I might want to tell you a little bit more before we go to the next stage. I graduated from Michigan, went to work for a year at Dayton, Ohio. Didn't work out. I I, I admit it. You know, I wasn't called back for the second year. And yeah, the fire was looking. I put in nice sweat. So I had to head it out to California and say that probably young man go west, which nobody did for me at the time. We had to jump into my little sports car out to the beaches and ended up in Anaheim, California. I got a coaching, uh, coaching teaching job at the high school there. And then a, a swimming, swim school, which was not the San Luis Swim School, who was a two time gold medalist. Fiber for USA. So anyway, I got the job at coaching age groupers in, in the age the 12 and unders. And this is the luckiest coach of men I'm on the present. So I'm in I'm in the coaching young people at the time. I know I mean, these kids got these kids gonna be Olympians. This was Gary Hall's father. Okay. The old, the old Gary Hall, Bruce Furness, Steve Furness. Steve Furness just started uh, Tia, which is a big company now, and Dr. Rod Strachan, who's a, a physician now, a doctor now, was in a, in a program on, on the age group. It just happens to be that all three of these went on to be very successful in life, not necessarily in swimming, they all had gold medals, yet I had no clue at the time they were in an age group program, which I did. A lot of I am work out what they do, but yeah, I divided the one hour into 15 minutes fly, 15 minutes back, rest free, and when we went up to uh, an hour and a half later on, I had a little bit more. So I have always been my basic of, of coaching. So and I think you have noticed that before, but let's go back to uh, let, let me go back. Uh, help me if I lose my thought process periodically. Let's see, where were we? We were talking about uh, the pool deck in the 90s in Michigan with Tom and names. Oh, yeah. Forget this. So, I forget it. You know, Tom Dolan. Tom almost did not make the Olympic team. He was struggling. He, he, he was asthmatic. And he took him up to Colorado Springs for four or five weeks. Like, that's a double whammy. You are really asthmatic. You can't take it up the altitude. You can't breathe up there. And he worked the butt off. He's always pushed them. He always won. He didn't like. He, he doesn't like to win. He just doesn't like to lose. It doesn't matter whether it's four guys or his team. Very much like my coach. And just just keep it going. And uh, so, uh, luckily, we got him back to go back to the Olympics. And luckily, that year, you, you know, if I if I look back, why not? The pool out of the 24 men swimmers I coached, including divers at the time, I looked in the pool very highly clean leading up to the 1996 games. He said, I think everybody in this group should be at the Olympics. I mean, it, it's just we, we didn't have any meat there. We could lose that meat anyway a year before. <laughs> we had so much talent, okay? And uh, so it, it all worked out. Eight people made the U.S. Olympic team. These were the people connected to either Michigan or Wolverine, which was an elite team. 
and other Turk people made it through their own countries, whatever. Gustavo Borges, for example, and other countries, and numerous kids. So um, it's very seldom in life you're going to have all the all all that in one place. I was fortunate to have uh, <laughs> after a couple of decades. Of, and he said, he said something in going to work. Okay, I was going to correct you. I never worked a day in my life. I just had a hobby. And I got paid for it. I traveled with it. I have a great life. And, um, yeah. If I if I were to be an engineer, from I got kicked out because I couldn't pass organic chemistry twice in a row. And all the kids that are take from the job don't take that class. Don't. It's a weed out. Come on, it's a weed out. <laughs> and I said, heck yeah. And not only took the class, I took two semesters in two months. I'll prove you guys wrong. Well, I failed, <laughs> and I got kicked out of kicked out of engineering. But there was a young doctorate student in physics, physics in, in, in physiology who used to come down and uh, take uh, test of the swim team on uh, interval training, which was very right back in the 50s. Interval training just came across the ocean from Europe. So we used to use the, uh, basically running the first. And so he did a lot of studies on it. And I got really hooked on Dr. Dr. Faulkner, Dr. John Faulkner. And he was only 10 years older than we were. And we made a real good connection between the, the doctor and the team. And we learned a lot about training. And this was not the, the energy, energy system which you and I talk about. Oh, he talked about it, John. All you have to remember how far you want to go, how fast you want to go, how often you want to go. And I was just thinking about back now, 40, 50 years later, this was the beginning of the energy system because it depends what distance you swim. Uh, what, uh, the only thing, only thing new we can add on, we measured pulse while, while we were uh, testing at Michigan, we took everything in a pulse. One thing I failed to tell you or anybody in the world, but when we designed this color program, we did not use lactate. We did not use the lactate curve. We only used the heart rate curve to, remember, to come up with somewhere between. For example, last night when you were asleep, when we were all asleep last night, the energy system was working. That wasn't working very high, because especially when you get in the REM cycle, and every, the heartbeat slows down significantly. You know, I usually go under 40, even at my age. I get a I get a red, a red uh, bell on my phone. You know, you, you, you below 40. And uh, so that's a good idea to monitor, especially for you if you can't go, keep running those seven minute miles. So, so anyway, I forgot where I was going, but it gives me my. I'm not as bad as any race, you know, I find my <laughs> Well, no, that's great. That's actually a good segue, John, because I wanted to ask you the role that your wife played in some of the development of the energy systems. Your wife was a physiologist uh, she, professor. She, yeah, she she still is working on something right now, even though she retired from Michigan. She was on the faculty. Matter of fact, Dr. John Faulkner, a young man I was telling you about, is testing us. Eventually, he became, he had a he had a lab, a physiology lab of, of, of himself. And that's when my wife, when we first moved to Michigan, started out at that lab. Eventually, my wife had her own lab. But uh, she was very instrumental. And I'm going to break this in right now, appropriate, because uh, Jan Ulbrich, I don't know, you probably heard of him. Yes. Yeah. A physiologist and, and semi semi swim coach in Europe, okay, came up with the threshold study. That's the early 80s when I got to Michigan, so I got a hold of the, the, the threshold because he sent me two swimmers from one, no way one from Sweden to come to Michigan. So I got very much involved with Jan and exchanged some ideas. And so I looked at the threshold cycle, and after a few months, I said, wait a minute, we need to... We need to, we, we're not going to swim 25 Ks and 1500s all the time. We need to have some race based kind of stuff. So I went to my wife, honey, her name is Melanie. They didn't call her a doc. Never had a father doc. And uh, 
say, I'm working on something. We know, we know what the threshold is. Steady state swim. You go for half an hour long at the same time, same breath, same breath. They think we'll test that. Okay, that's boring. I, 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 I can agree with this. It's in a pool. It's boring. We do something different. So I said, how can I go from this velocity, which is the kids in slow velocity, they're going at gray space for half an hour, 40 minutes, whatever. How can I go up the VO2 max? So she said, okay, I'll give her some time to take it over. And talking to the physiologist, the conclusion was somewhere between 7 to 9% faster. So your VO2 max, now if you put this into the velocity, it's for 20 seconds, for a minute, or five minutes, or 15 minutes, or two hours for a 10K, whatever. Okay, so our heart rate will change it along the along the way. So, and that, and you asked the question, how do you come up with the colors? Well, I came up with the colors because then the colors of the rainbow. So that, that was very very simple, and I I, I did it as a joke because first we made you know, made up anaerobic one, anaerobic two, okay? So we then we picked threshold and we picked up the bulk threshold and we got arrived into the O2 match. So all of this over the years we finally decided because every physiologist come up with their own principles, okay? They call it the zones. Dr. Saylor called it the gear one, gear two, gear three. But most physiologists agree the energy system it's about Five, we can go more, more, take it down more than five. Actually, University of Michigan, they got to Josh White, whom I left this program when I left Michigan. He added on, so they have a lot more. For me, it was too much. I mean, I could hardly handle five on the system. So basically, what we're in training from the time you wake up in the morning until you finish your fast run or fast or whatever, you might go to about 80 seconds, 80 beats, 80 beats. In time, so we we put we picked the the medium one, which is the threshold pace. I call it red. Okay, that's that's where the pulse is 150 to 175, 150 to 170 for most people. Now, the why did we use lactate? Because lactate is so confusing. Now, how could you test lactate when you got 60 people in the water, coaching men, men and women in the pool? It's impossible. So. So, but that's why we stuck with uh, taking parts as simple. You can use a giant batch of uh, parts meter, right? I, I came up with a, my own parts meter. Uh, it's called a John three digit, three digit, use three digits of your fingers, put it on your neck like that, and zero, one, two, three, et cetera. It's so easy, it doesn't cost any money. The only problem is you can cheat, you know. They said, yeah, hey, Johnny, one was yours. Johnny was 32. Hey, Johnny, hey, what's yours? I'm 32. Are you guys holding hands? What's going on? <laughs> I'm, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I mean, sometimes, you know, you're so tired, you don't want to put your hand on deck. You can barely grab your hair. Uh, let's put the gun. Okay. Uh, you have, you have another question. Oh, I know what it is. I have to talk to my son. He doesn't, did not fit into the mold on this. Because you should have at the at the red the red pace, which is your hot, which is the threshold, real threshold pace. Okay, you should be between 150 and 170. I'm sure you, you discovered that by now. Yeah. Now I had one girl, Katie Hoff, was in my program at the late stage of her. She's from Baltimore, matter of fact. Yep. Yeah, she used to come over to my, my daughter's place, but I would go next to each other. So <clears throat> when Katie decided to come back and, and train for the uh, London Olympics, she, she came out to California to train here. And we did some threshold work. And the problem with Katie was that she was dying on the red pace. She could not hold the time, but I expected her to, with that pause, you should be able to hold the time. So if the time was too fast, your parts went 
instead of go to 150, 170, jumps right up to 80, 180, 190. So I ask the USA people to come up periodically, especially the days, Mondays and Thursdays, when I do threshold work. Come on out there, let's have somebody test Katie and take a blood black data to what's going on. Let me find out. But I had to bring Katie down the back to pink color to have the threshold at 150 and 170. But that's, you know, that you, we're, we're doing aerobic work. You don't need to be over 180. Yes, it's, it's, it's not going to benefit you. Matter of fact, it's probably destroy you. So, to, so I made a change in candy. So when my, my post had a choice for everybody to do the workout, and I put down candy, you do pink. And all the guys are complaining, what's pink? Because she said, oh, what's going on, John? That was it. That's the best thing for Katie, because I don't want her to die practice or, or leave, leave practice early because she can't make the time. Because we want to have the time and the pause at the right, uh, uh, the right place. And if we test with lactate, then we have another component. We have three things at the right place, then you get the best of the three. So, I'm sorry, I got off all No, that's okay. I wanted I wanted to ask you uh, in relation to that, Coach. When you're developing your charts and you were putting specific race times into the charts, race time into colors, what are some of the test sets that you used to develop individualized training within the color system? Uh, I said this to you. I don't know if you can read this. Can you read this in there? Yes, and actually the file that Coach is holding up, if you guys look on the side of your chat box and click on file, you're gonna be able to download these. So you can check on the chat box there, you'll see where it says files and slides, you'll be able to download these. I'm glad you're reading it because for me, we'd be back upside down backwards. I can, <laughs> I can, have, I can barely read it, it normal. So yeah. on the same workout, on the same page, which I cut it in half so you can see it better, we have designated colors in there for the purple. I don't know who the people are in there. Oh, uh, that one was in Colorado Springs at Altitude Camp. And yep. I didn't put any names on that because I think I said not ready. I don't think there's anybody, anybody to ready to do what I would like them to do. So I asked them to pick a challenging can you read it on top so pick a challenging pace so you have to be careful especially when you go to altitude by the way dr falk here whom i talked to you about did a lot of studies in michigan dr yeah. falk became the head physio oh what did i do oh it's just me john i'm just sharing oh, okay. that screen so people can see yeah you you do what you need to do um, uh, i got time Okay, I'm having a little issue with the format of it, but that's okay. We can come back to it. And you guys can download that anytime. You're good, John. Yeah, well, but, so the reason I, I just mentioned this because Dr. Faulkner, but after all the study that he did with us back in the late 50s, early 60s, he learned a lot and he was asked to be the head physiologist in, in Colorado Springs at the Air Force Academy to get ready for the 1968 Olympics. So a lot of the information I have, and I've been to Colorado Springs more than anybody, anybody, and of course nobody's of my age, that's the problem, I still go up there now. But I started in 1977 when it first opened the up, when we trained at the Air Force Academy. Matter of fact, my wife was in, often taught, hope she, hope she doesn't hear me. John is having an affair in Colorado Springs because I'm up there all the time. So I mean, it wasn't that way. That was just a joke. Sure. Yeah. So no, you're good. So when you're when you're putting together these charts for people, are there sets that you're using to measure performance in the beginning that that help you apply where they should be in their training? Oh. Heck yes, that was the, that's that's what we're here for. <laughs> yes, I should have I should have told you at the beginning when Jan gave me this information 
Okay, then we start thinking about we, we did a lot of hundreds and two hundreds and four hundreds, everything, and then you know, check the pulse and the one, make sure we got the 150 to 170. That's what we thought, that, which is actually right in the middle of the, the 120 to 200. Okay, so in, in fitness or, or exercise, you should be able to go from 120 to 200 gradually going up. Okay? So 120 became the white base for me. And, and 150 was a red base for me, and 200 was a race base for me, okay, and all out effort. So that's how the whole thing starts. But how you determine that is you have to measure in your capacity. And if I can see if I can find capacity. You guys probably have you probably have seen capacity in here. Yes. Capacity leads to threshold, the threshold leads to race space. Can you see those uh, half, half, half circles there? Yeah. So first, we have to get this one first. And from that, you're going to get a, you're going to get a, a number, a velocity. From the velocity, we, can, we, we create a number. And uh, so you have... I see it, and they can. They're so, welcome to download this, this too, John. So they, they're to Mike, this is a good example for you. And we used to do it when, uh, at, at ASCO or, or major meets. All the coaches go out the morning around at five o'clock, and we're supposed <laughs> to be we're supposed to be uh, uh, talking about swimming or just kind of enjoy the the atmosphere running together, sharing some uh, uh, knowledge. And uh, as we as we go out in the first five, 10 minutes, everybody's talking and uh, everybody laughing and having a good time. And one person on the group picks up the tempo, is, picks up the pace, and next thing you know, uh, two, three minutes later, you're getting quieter and quieter, and you, you pick up the tempo more. Some people uh, are not talking anymore. What happened? We crossed the threshold. We went <laughs> aerobic is pay as you go, pay as you go, pay as you go. And somewhere, but it's, there's no line in there. If you didn't cross something. It, 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 because the energy system is always running. It's always going on. It's not focused in on threshold at 150. The energy system is it's always moving. So we can't really... Matter of fact, it's not even a good idea for me to give all these five different categories for it because it's, it's always going down. But for the purpose of training, I think that's that's how we arrive to that. So, did it make sense? Absolutely, and they can actually download that too because we put it up for people to have. So that's that's super helpful, Coach. You can download anything I send you because I I'm never made a penny of publishing anything. I, I, I want to leave it here with, with you guys on this earth because I don't know when I'm going to be gone. Uh, who knows? I'm not sure. My wife is not going to put it into the, <laughs> the grave or something. Maybe she will get rid of all this. Stuff. Coach, when you're teaching your athletes this system, how long did it typically take for your swimmer to become well-versed in the color and to hit specific speed based on the color. What was the typical learning curve there? Well, I'll tell you honestly. When we when we started when we started this threshold, I had to sit down and explain. Okay, that coaching is not about just X's and O's. We can all write workouts. Right now, I can write twenty workouts on on the, on the internet from somebody posting a workout. Even it's worthless, but you know it's there. Somebody will pay attention to it. Okay, so uh, I sit down with the team and we explain exactly why we're doing it. What's the reason? Okay, because I think in teaching you you have to connect with people. Your best, if you remember, if you look back to your elementary school, what teacher's name you remember? The one who connected with you had eye to eye contact, but the other ninety percent probably didn't have it. I said, "Oh, that sucks." You know, that wasn't a good class. I ain't that good. Don't take a class. You know? Yeah. So, as in coaching, 
we it's probably more important to have 51 percent uh, uh, connecting with people or then instead of just writing 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 work out so i for me uh, for me it's, it's very very important to be connected with people i'm glad i'm not an engineer because i would be in the office someplace and working on the computer and crawl inside a computer well i understand it i like to be outdoors i like to do things so i think you know sometimes doesn't matter what something happens to you you get thrown out of school maybe it, it's the best thing that ever happened to you you move on with something else so it didn't take me too long everybody having having the threshold days back in early days except the first year in michigan it was like a riot everybody's so pumped about it and usually happened on one on friday on monday afternoon after saturday saturday's workout it was a normal workout we didn't rest or any paper for the threshold type study then you come in monday morning go some easy stuff then something and then you get in the whole team gets involved every every coach that they, they, they type each people and put in a how fast they go on and put a chemical lapse and all that report record everything on it and, and everybody party to the first one was about five six weeks in the season in september you probably uh, schedule it sometime in october and hopefully get one on christmas time before break down for christmas holidays okay then you do it again about maybe four or five weeks before uh, conference championships or empty place for those who do not Great for conference, and um, and then that, that's three. Sometimes we have one maybe in May, depends on base. Now, sometimes it went hard enough to carry out the awesome people to go to US nationals or the international trips. You know, I think we don't take any time off at that situation. See, right back into the pool, and so you carry the aerobic base with you all the way to Omaha or wherever the uh, trial you are, and out to the Olympics. And you come back from the Olympics end of August, and you go back to school in September. What happened right now with this virus? We we had the longest break ever in my my life. Ten weeks, three months, at home, locked up in our house with your wife. <laughs> it's hard to keep it moving, right? Yeah, she put me to work painting the first day out there. Get on it. We're going to paint the house. We're going to do the garden. And we're going to. Oh, John. I was hoping to get over this thing and get out back to the farm, back to the pool. Let's say we're walking to practice. It's uh, October in 1994 at the University of Michigan. We're heading over to Canham. What's the threshold sets? What are they going to look like? Can you tell us what those sets were? Do you, uh, do you want me to go watch one of my workout books? That that would make my day. A swim nerd like me, that would make my day. If the swim nerd, I was a swim nerd. I had the workouts from there, man. I was swimming in 1957. I have a little book. I get four, five, six lanes away from the trash can, and I they throw it in. Oh, I, I win something. And some of the athletes want to do the same thing. They say, let me do it, John. Okay, go ahead. I'll give you a 20 if you make it in, or you can have a morning off. You can't be in school. What an inspiration it is. So what was the date? November? October 1994. I'd like to know what some of those threshold sets were specifically, so our coaches who are on today can get some ideas for when they return to the pool. Holy smoke. Let me open this up. I know you were. A My threshold days we used to be on Mondays. I don't know if we have time on this one. This, this, this uh, 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 flyers I gave you. You, you can, you can dig in there. But here's, here's one workout. This is uh, Thursday, October 13th. And what, what was the main threshold set that day? Oh, you gotta do it over your camera, John. That's your. You gotta just slide it over to your camera. There you go. Oh, my, oh I, I want to look at. I got two. I got two. I got two. Okay, I got a mini computer which I can't read anymore. That's awesome. Can you talk about that set right there? 
Well, let me look at it. That's been, you know, I have, I have over, I have over 4,000, 4,000 workouts on this one because every workout for the last decade or so, I've been putting it on my phone. So if you want to call me, say, John, send me a workout, and I'll go put something up and you've got to work out. So in this particular, this particular, this particular workout, I actually have a distance workout, high end workout, MD workout, backstroke workout, and breaststroke workout. That's like one, two, three, four, five. Yeah. Yeah. Five. Can you tell us what the main set was that day? Uh, which one you want to? Which one you want to know? Let's do uh, the. I'd like to be the I am. Yes. All uh, right, the I am set was four one hundred five back on one thirty. I think this is yards, but I'm not. Actually, at Michigan, in in the fall, we used to have exclusively long course workouts September until uh, the meet in December, whatever meet we usually have in December. We used to go long course. Uh, this is probably more like short course. Yes. Okay, so the set was okay, four one hundred, five back and one thirty, four hundred I am on five thirty, four twenty seconds rest. Oh, this I think this is I think this is this is uh, pretty long. Okay, this was a uh, Tom Melchow, Andy Potts. Not with, not with Wales. Oh, we know these kids. I didn't never. So that was so that four four one hundred five back four hundred I am at five thirty four one hundred back breast. You could probably figure this one out on one thirty four hundred I am and five thirty four one hundred breast free and one thirty four four hundred I am and five thirty four one hundred free at one twenty. And four one on diam at the end. So that was one, one, two, three, four. I think it's four four hundred IMs in it. And the uh, I and the IMs have to be descended one through four and loosened down, loosened down four hundred, back free, alternating back free. So John, what what was Tom Dolan and Eric Namesnick? What what were they throwing down on that last four hundred IM? Uh, were those guys were those is that 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 era? Oh yeah, I guess. Uh, oh oh, when when I said about Tom Melchow, Andy Potts, it was a note to my team. As a note to my team, that we have recruits that weekend coming in. I so saw that. Those were the not the. So I'm telling you, I don't really record workouts and workout because I'm too busy watching than writing names on. Okay, I'm not worried about that. And most people did a damn good job because uh, for that Olympic coming up, we have. We had first, second, and fourth place at the Olympics at, at that year. And these are the guys who are doing this work. I, uh, if you're interested, I can, I can copy this and say. Oh, uh, yeah. That. I would like every volume of your workouts from 1982 to 2004. <laughs> well, look, at, look back here. There's that, that, some workouts there. But anyway, uh, that was just one. But, but you can see the difference in there. But the other people did. The, the, uh, the stroke people, I don't know who they're in that group, and I know a heck of a lot of people. Over, uh, so that was. Uh, uh, let's let let's move move on to what what other things you guys like to poke my brain while I'm still have it before Alzheimer's comes. In. Oh, you you're a treasure. We we have a great question here because a lot of the success at Michigan was uh, event wide. You had great athletes at every distance in every event, but arguably the 400 IM and the 500 free and 200 freestyle middle distance stroke and IM, those were the bread and butter at Michigan in those days. 
So what do you think separated some of the things that you were doing at Michigan to bolster those events that maybe some other places weren't doing at the time? Well, uh, I did a lot of sustained efforts in workouts. As a matter of fact, my biggest issue nowadays, I think a lot of the young coaches, and I, I respect, young coaches are smarter than I ever was in my life. I mean, they're, everybody's so well educated, including you. You guys know a lot. I think when we old school, and then I started out with the age group team and moved with the high school team, we learned along the way how, how to coach and how to deal with people. And uh, so uh, let me go back to the talk and repeat it again. That's okay. What, what do you think you were doing at Michigan that was different than some other places that made those 500 frees and 400 IMs? You, so you know, that, I, I, I did not know that when I was very early in my coaching career before people even knew who I am, I was. Uh, we didn't exchange ideas like we do now. I'm exchanging with coaches, Eddie or, or, or Greg or Troy. Matter of fact, Troy just called me a couple of days ago. John, what? what I see, I see one of your workouts from years back, and then he sent it. He said, "What was it?" And he sent it to me. Eight point eight meters. Eight hundred. It was eight thousand eight hundred. I can imagine. Ryan locked it. Ryan is going to laugh at it with me, but that's what he said. The kids are working hard. They do the best they can. So, the reason we have the best country on this planet is swimming. It's because coaches are respect each other and support each other. Okay, we don't never, you never hear anybody talk bad. At least not with the group I am dealing with, with being jealous of the other other team, the other side of the town. We we share everybody. Talk to, not come up any day. Anybody say, what do you guys do today? Yeah, we do that. What are you? Okay, let's let's try it. That's that's why we're so good. So no jealousy and. and and I hope it remains this way. And we don't want, you know, if you look at the pure sprint, the call, the 50 and 100 call, you would not do anything over it. I would not advise any of those coaches to do any, any of the things we do now because those kids, especially the level, well, I would object to what I said. When you're young, when you're 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, I think you should be exposed to to uh, aerobic training some way or another, we gotta squeeze it in. Because when I recruited Nathan Adrian, okay, I visited him and the four eight hundreds had to do in practice. Uh, Gustavo Borges came into Michigan for I think uh, that was Troy, whoever gave him a workout for one thousand on the recruiting weekend. And most of the kids come in and thought that they would tear up or you know, yeah, and say, oh, no, coach didn't give me anything, John. Oh, yeah, I believe it. You probably threw it out the window because you don't want to do it. But, but Gustavo, I watched him from my office, even though I wasn't supposed to. But, you know, you know I watched him honestly finish the workout. That's why he became a, a captain on, on my team his senior year. That's why he won 12, I don't know how many gold medals at the end of the one, but on the 100 every year, I guess, a couple of times, the 200 and the 50. Matter of fact, my, my best meet ever had as a, as a college meet is the NC2 is when we won. We won the 50, 100, the 200, the 500, the 1650, the 4 and I am, all, all those events. And uh, I don't know if this ever going to be happen again anymore because the sprint oriented people definitely not going to have anybody score over 200 or very minor points. Consolation final, last few places. And the people who are still into my, my bottom and Dr. Josh White doing a real good job in Michigan, maintaining a dis distance atmosphere and being well respected and supported. And they are, can also do well on the sprints. But even, so it's not going to be. So down the road is not going to be that easy, especially with uh, the ISL coming in with all the sprints, the sprint stuff, and kids want to stay in the sport a little bit longer than they should. They should go on and get a job, a real job, and live, 
because you don't make that much money. But you know, we can't talk to these kids. They have their own mind. I'm, I'm, I'm for the change, but I like to maintain the distance and uh, emphasis somehow. Uh, Coach, I, I want to ask you in relation to the color systems, and now that everybody kind of has a good idea of, of your background and, and even the gem of seeing some of your workouts, when you're talking to your athletes about race strategy, changing speeds, how are you using the color system to help them understand that? Is that a part of the process? No, uh, yeah, that, that's a good question. And no, no, nobody ever asked me that before. I have never used that philosophy at all. But when we talk about race, pace, racing and so on, we talk more, more about pacing. That's, that's my thing. You want to go to 150 for 100 meter freestyle long course meters. You want to go 150. I want you to go out 26 foot with a smooth long stroke, moderate kick, but not over kick. Start breathing immediately. All right. You want to take out air and then. The second 50, put a little bit more legs into it. And the third 50, still building on it, pick up the tempo. And the last 50, you have a tsunami type kick. So you watch these NC20 type of big boys nowadays, they go 130, 130 flat, 129. I counted 13 or 14 last year at the NC20s. Those are fast times. I wish we can convert that, add on 14 seconds, and I, we have 12. 12 144 200 freestyle in America instead of 45 46, what most of these guys are producing. But I feel really feel that we do we need to do more sustained training, okay? Especially if you plan the sort of 200, you 50 and 100. I hear well, I just take five plays and leave us alone. You guys can play around with whatever two you want to play with. Them. But I let the other guys go and establish that. The distance, uh, distance uh, mind we have, and we don't want to. It's a color. That's it. It's a distance is for a moment. Call it a beat for five. It's a love The coaches love it. You show up and work out with a smile. Look, the great workout. You ask me a question. You post the workout. Yes. Every workout is posted. Well, what, what you guys, what you guys see in here, what you guys see in here. I may have to work out the night before. I don't wait until the morning. I'm going to sit on the toilet seat and try to come up with a workout. <laughs> That's right. So John, when you're talking about uh, percent speeds for the mile or percent efforts for a 400 IM, where is some of that information coming from when you're developing your training? So. You, you talk a lot about your, your color charts, but I know there have been times at Michigan where you might have used a, a T3000 uh, to help develop some more information on athletes. Are there other sets that you might have used to figure out percent effort? I'm not 100% on, on interpreting what you say. So so I know- I don't use, I don't use a I, I don't know if I use a percentage. Uh, what, where did you get that idea? The uh, Max VO2 stuff that you used to do with Chris Thompson. So it was 30 100s free at oh, one. Yeah, okay. Matter of fact, I had, I, I told my desk in the office, I didn't want to bring it over. 30 100s, <laughs> 30, yes. And I had the same one with Tom Dolan also. Yeah. Yeah. So Chris, Thompson, Chris Thompson is very aerobic, man. man right? Yeah, God only gave him two, two, two fast switch fibers, and that's both of them in his eyelids. <laughs> and so he, he uh, couldn't do a pull up when he came to came to Michigan, and he improved four hundred percent by the time he graduated. Yeah, he ended up going four four pull ups in four years. <laughs> But he had the world, he had the American record for 13 or 14 years at 1426. So you know, there's, there's different different folks out there. We got to treat them all differently. And not all of them are the same. And, and that's our job or our hobby is to make sure that they're happy and they're doing the work where need to do the work and the type of work. So going back to your question, I 
I'm more, I spent a lot more time, 500 freestylers, which we sometimes control, don't actually twice, four or five people make finals. I was doing that, I told them to negative 20, I'd go out to, go out uh, 206, run back 206, that's a 412. Go out, uh, they did the same thing with Kate the deck, he went, she went, I mean, I'll go to the Olympics, you know, 800, so we'll go, go out to 4, 408 and come back. Uh, 408 or 408, I forgot what it was, she only had the 14, but took it about two or three years for Bruce, Bruce, Bruce Gamble to find out, find out that 403, 403, actually she did uh, 800 to 406, huh? and they can learn it, okay, but you gotta teach it to them, <laughs> they want to go up and kill themselves, okay, physiology always no <laughs> run, you're not going to be physiology. <laughs> right. Right. So as you start to see the athletes develop into understanding the color system and working it in practice, what what was your taper like for the typical middle distance swimmer? And I know at Michigan you did the three week taper. Is that right? Yeah, and uh, probably some of you guys have seen that three three. Yeah, three week taper. Yeah, and and the inside of that three week taper, you had some reduction in certain energy systems. Other energy systems may have been used more. Can you talk a little bit about yeah, that? Yeah, the, the way the taper, the way the 21 days goes, but well, some people have less, especially once you start coaching females and so on, you don't need that. Especially distance famous, uh, you don't want to go that long. <laughs> One week might be enough. Uh, but uh, what we did is we cut down. We kept doing. Okay, it's a good question here. We all the way up to the day of the meet, we stayed on. We stayed on the, the rotation, which is by weekly rotation. Uh, every Monday is special day. Some either morning or afternoon or both. Every Tuesday is active rest with some maybe some power in it and every wednesday is going and wednesday and saturday is going to be race phase or or let some kind of relactates and we both maybe go six one hundred and eight minutes and try to hold 92 percent of the best one at time and that and that and we continue it and we continue this all the way to all the way to three weeks three weeks out then the third week, you go maybe on a Saturday, or you go three one hundreds, maybe on six minutes, and see if you can go ninety two or faster than ninety two percent or not, or, or no limits. Actually, you tell no limit. It's taper time now. Let's see how much how, what, what you can do on three weeks out. And two weeks out, we only have two. So hey, hey, dude, only have to come out, go hard on both. Then on a, a week out, only go one, and then and the sky is the limit. Do your best time, great. That's even better. Have that be happy to show up. Uh, I can answer to answer it. One of the, the, the warm up, for example, for example, at the warm up with Dolan and, and John Pierce, one with a boat swim at the same event. And he went, okay, the warm up is usually about 800 swim, 600 pull, 400. Kick and 200 broken, and uh, maybe some, some uh, that's usually was a standard, but not everybody did that. Once we get down to that level, you do what, what feels good, do what you believe in, and so on. And that, that don't cheat because only take this out. And what, what, I, what I did with uh, this at freestylers, okay, in a Thursday morning, first event, okay, in the warm up, I want you to give me 250s. 250s and 45 or 50 seconds or whatever room is available. And I want to say uh, half of you, half of your 100 or half, uh, half of 100, uh, 27 and 27. That's, that's, that's four. 27 and 27 is, uh, no, uh, no, 27. That's, I'm talking about meters. Uh, 23, 5, 23, 5, something like that. It's at 46 plus. So basically working on working on the race space on that. So then the, the, the guys get 23, 23 and the 47 flat. And after the, you know, the 47 flat smooth and even swim, get the hell out of there. 
<laughs> and and then, I, do, I do this to Tyler Clay at the last Olympics, and we got down just to the just at the, at the Olympics and into the finals. You know, and, and, and probably the usual the four fifties. They go too small, and one pick it up, and one go for it, and then and he just on the first one or two in 28, 28, Okay, that's it. Out of here. You don't need. You don't even need to see the last one, right? No, 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 no. So usually I recognize that that's a good sign. I don't even have to get out of you. I use a word you are supposed to say it on television. So, Coach, during your taper, what specific things are you looking for in the groups to know when to make those changes? As coaches, we all have plans. I'd like to think we all have plans. What are some things that you look for? Uh, you know, inside of their 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 training, inside of the energy system that you're looking for, what are you looking for uh, to, have, and then making adjustments based on what you see? Well, my philosophy on taper. I've heard people talking to me in the past. I miss my taper. Miss my taper. You missed your training. Okay, you know, there's no such a thing. I have never had, honestly, never had. A bad taper, except maybe one time in 1972, six because I took the trials and I over tapered them. I used somebody else's idea, and that's that's never good. It's just like a professor in physics he gives the final exams. I never thought the class always just TA was teaching the whole, whole semester. Then the professor comes and gives the final exam, and he had no clue what the hell was going on. So I took somebody else's taper, whom I kind of looked up to. And it didn't work. And that's it. We came back, and two out of the those six people won the uh, won the trials to the world championships. Won the five second. We eventually ended up a couple years later winning the gold medal. But uh, so put me back on my track again because I have a, a chance to uh, go. Somewhere no, else. that's okay. Everything everything you're saying, I think we're all taking notes on it, but. I was just asking you, what what cues do you look for in the athlete when you're making adjustments on taper? But how they feel in practice, you can tell. You can tell them when they show up in the pool. Like I'm, I'm a really good mind reader, but I really don't read the mind. I look at the face or look at the, the inspiration or <laughs> expiration of their, of their face and say, oh, okay, maybe let's take a morning off, okay? And, okay, it's taper time. You don't feel good, I think. But generally, according to my schedule, we have double workouts right up to the end. One, because many of I write the workout for many of the elite kids we have on the team, and like Gustavo or some of those guys, they have 14 plungers in three days, and they all have to be fast. That's even the morning uh, in the first heat is, is fast. You can't screw around it, that you can't play. And so, Hey, okay, you need another morning off and just come back for the afternoon and just, okay, let's just do warm, warm up and no sprints at the end. And that's where psychology comes in. That's a part of coaching. It's, it's, it's not writing this workout, give a workout, have your shoulder, a piece of cake, okay? Get it done and sell it to them and encourage them in the relationship is far more important than how much, you know, Bob Kippert, who's the head coach at, he, he, at Yale University about the time I came to America, he didn't even know how to swim. He had no swimming background. But he had the personality. And I look at some of the very successful coaches, and I know they don't use a whole lot of philosophy or, or physiology, more like philosophy, more like you know, like building relationship with the athletes to sell, to sell what we're going to do and for me, they've done everybody on the team, especially the leadership on the team, and then you have a good report with them. And, you know, at 80, at 84, I don't need to be out of there. But I went to, I went to, I went to work on Friday at Big uh, Sailor's new team at Illinois. And next, I went to uh, Mark Schubert's workout. They had Michel Guillermo. I really enjoyed going to the game. That's very impressive. No, and the coaches, and there's all young coaches. Matthew Davis is an old coach now. He's 63 years old. I met Dave Sale the first time when, when he was 40, when he was 10 years, 18 years old, 43 years ago. He was on my first class at Long Beach State University. 
Then I went back to the his assistant coach the last eight or nine years. But I enjoyed it because it's fun to be a young coach, especially young, well, the young students. Going back to the next question you might have, what about this, what about the time, time out we have for, for three months for, for, for all of us, including athletes? You know, we're going to get something good out of this. I think everybody needed a break, including myself and the parents and the coaches, and we charge the batteries, come back with refresh goals. I follow these kids, especially the kids on the national team and some of these young kids on social media. They're so clever. They're so, they're creating things and they're posting it and they're so proud of it. Like, Man, we're, we're going to be there next year. No problem. Just this three months, we can make this thing up. Matter of fact, it's good for you to have a summer off. And, and you realize that they spend time with your family, they go fishing and do this or traveling. Um, <clears throat> so I, I am, I'm, I'm good with that. I, I, I didn't wish, I didn't want 120,000 people to die, unfortunately. Matter of fact, my wife just came back this morning. She had a negative. I, for four days now, we've been worried about what's going to happen. And then she went down and tested, got the test, and then. I was scared the whole thing, you know, would be locked down another 14 days. And, thank, thank goodness. You know, luckily, uh, we just got the results a couple of hours ago. So, John, do you think, along those lines, um, do you think that our performances at trials will be impacted by a lack of long course meets the last couple months and the, the future few months? Well, no, I, we, we, we have already, I'm on a, I'm on a committee. We set up meets already starting, I think in October starting. We're going to be back on, on target time, okay? What we did in, uh, in March on the Grand Prix meet, on the Grand Prix, the tier meet now, on the morning, that was so exciting. I already spent half a week already was in Colorado Springs because from the morning, all of the national kids were going to come to Colorado Springs. And most of them did, but the camp only lasted for 10 days because they kicked us out of Colorado Springs because of the virus. And the times were unbelievable. I counted at least eight or nine medals of people on the medal stand, okay, on the podium. All the times in the tour, right? you just a rink and they meet with 300 people in there, no spectators. And there's like nothing. And uh, so we were so well. This is the most. I've been up around the Olympics for at least 50 years, and this is the most preparation I've, I've seen of, of, for any team ever. Okay, now look, I'm connected with the U.S. national team, so I know there are people who's going on, but our preparation for the athletes and the coaches are unbelievable. I mean, they're, 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 they're doing the job, and they're going to do the job again once we get back to normal. <laughs> Just do a normal movie. <laughs> We don't know what. John, can, can you talk about Michigan, Ohio State? Remember? The new yeah, I did ask you that. Michigan, Michigan is going to turn the tide and be Ohio State. I hope this is the year. John, can is it possible to train every energy system in the same workout? You know, I do that. Matter of fact, matter of fact, uh, uh, as, as I'm getting a little bit old, but I don't give straight sets anymore. Everything is broken down. Maybe a 300 and a 150 and a 75 and a 50, and, and, and put the inner or such, and then not getting too much rest. So we're still getting the aerobic benefits because I don't want it because that's not a purpose of that work out that particular day on the Monday or maybe on the Tuesday. So. Um, that, that's our, I, I, and I learned a lot from Dr. Salo. Salo, Salo is by far the sharpest coach on that. Unfortunately, he's no longer at USC, but he's got a senior group. He's got a, he's got an international group. He, he's going to be up front. He's doing exactly what he would love to do. Pure sprint, and um, he's going to be active. John, can you talk – one thing that, that you've always said is that young coaches give you the energy to keep coaching. And you you had Bob Bowman on deck with you for a while. Can, can you tell us a little bit about what you learned from Bob as he was a young coach? This is how it started. I've been watching Bob because I used to go to Baltimore a lot. So I've, I've been on the Baltimore deck for a long, many, many years. 
weeks all together. And so I, we became very close friends. And, uh, uh, but uh, uh, I got, when we found out, when I retired, I designated uh, as uh, the MZ to be the head coach. But the athletic department said, no, we're going to pick the coach. We're going to go, go uh, national search, all that. Okay, fine. And, uh, if, you know, you're right. I'm sure I shouldn't interfere in that. And uh, so when we find out we have the NFC, we're not going to get the job. We went to Orlando, Florida for the CEO National or something in March, or early April. And we'll go off for a run. We're not running eight minute miles up there. <laughs> Maybe I could have it back at that time. <laughs> and so Bob and I were out for a run with some coaches and we talked. And, hey, Bob, we were talking about the Michigan job. Yeah, not really. So we finished the run, went back there the next morning. Hey, Bob, have you talked about more? Yeah, I'm, man, I'm interested. Bob, I'm not in the day. I have my appointment. I'll be there for my <laughs> And I think it's the best thing for Bob at the time because Michael needed to get out of that environment. I mean, he was swimming with... 13, 14 year old big, big wing, okay, okay. So needed to get in some uh, college environment. And that's where we had a real big boost to call Goldberg in the elite team because then we picked up. Well, Cleve Keller and some of the guys came back from, from Michigan before that. But uh, so that was, uh, that, that was uh, Bob's, Bob, and everybody says, not, not everybody I was, oh, anybody at Chris Michael Fox. No way. I'm the closest to anybody watching Michael for the last 20 years since he's been in the sport. And nobody, and Bob, Bob was perfect for Michael because they were stubborn, both of them very stubborn. Many, many times I have to tell them, say, Bob, why don't you go back to the office? Michael, go to the locker room. Let's, rest, let's restart this uh, a little bit later. Let's go down, come on, take it easy. So I felt like I'm a grandpa who separated the you know, other son and the grandson in that way. Right? Okay. <laughs> so it went out for, for a long time, but it, it worked out pretty good. And regardless of what Michael had done, uh, he's over that and he's just a beautiful person now. I mean, he's going to be a great father. So I think he's going to be a role model for. Long ways to come before we have another one, uh, Michael Phelps. Sure, John. Can you talk quickly uh, about your weekly plan and what it looked like? Yes, matter of fact, like one, one of these charts, you guys. But I, 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 I give you a real up to date three day Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, what the workout is like. Yes. And, and 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 you know everybody says that might be boring. It's not boring because the system. I'm still rotating. You ask me, anybody ever breaks down? Nobody ever breaks down because I'm smart enough to rotate the system. So it's two workout, two workouts for 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 uh, basic threshold building or. Um, I think I was okay. Oh, for capacity, working on your capacity. So two two out of ten is not going, but the rest of the day do whatever you want. And you don't some days you just go, some day you just do the set and go by field. Okay, how about just check your pause? Don't worry about the time. Now if if I really want something good, then I'll say yeah, I just tell them leave the fields at home or hang in the <laughs> leave it on the bedroom door. So I you know, you know, you know, you know don't bring me, don't give me any feelings. Today is not a feeling today. I'm not, I'm not a psychiatrist, okay? Let's just get down to work. Work still works. And I work, see it, work. I see it in a program where it's successful and not afraid to uh, put a uh, foot on the paddle. <laughs> it, it, it still does. You got to do it in moderation. You got to watch. But I think it's still, I, I feel, we got to look, equally myself, why the 500, 20 years, Tom Dolan had the record. What the hell was going on? How could we have Tom do it? Uh, here, I show, I show you. I have every one of his workouts. There's nothing special. And we didn't kill him. We almost did with it. <laughs> a lot of strings incident. <laughs> but we're blaming on altitude. 
So anyways, what was your question? I was just uh, your weekly plan. We were talking about your weekly oh, so, plan. So Monday is, is devoted to threshold. It doesn't matter if pulling. The heart doesn't know if you're kicking or pulling or swimming or biking or skating. Uh, it doesn't know. The heart will do what it needs to do, whatever, whatever it is. You know, just because you're a backstroker or a like Tyler Clay would do half the threshold workout, especially the, like the 300s or the 200s. Maybe on freestyle, maybe 400 is pretty great. On freestyle, then when you get down to the hundreds, the 75s, the 50s, then you roll over and go back to No big deal. But he, but he, so it doesn't matter if you're a breaststroker, if you go freestyle, I like my better man. Well, you don't, you don't go 2,000 breaststroke in practice, right? You, know, you can break it up to components, okay, but put it together. But even, the heart doesn't know as long as we keep the heart rate 150 to 170. You can go biking. No, biking isn't going to do a lot for you swimming, but your heart is going to be in pretty good shape if that's your goal. Sure. Was there a day where you might have focused more on the SP123 energy systems than, you know, your, your threshold days? Was there a, a Friday night sprint? I mean, was there any time or day that was dedicated to those aspects of your training? You mean uh, like the uh, 25, 15 and 25s? Your, yeah, your lactate stuff, your short distance lactate stuff. A lactate. Yes, A lactate. Yeah. Well, we do it every time. Like even even in uh, in a warm up, we'll go uh, 20, 25s. Okay, you can win two, win two, you can set out two. You should be excited they get you. It's like nothing, you know, they're less than peanuts. <laughs> But they, they get so competitive. So they, they're just, they just, this is good for them. Let's do that. Okay, let's like do 50. We can go 50s on it, 75. Okay. And then and that's a good transition from more up into the, the whatever the set is coming up. It's like I heat up or get the heart rate moving a little bit. And yeah, you know, yeah, that's exciting. I'm glad you asked those questions because swimming is rather important. It is a boring sport. We all did that. You know, it's boring. You got to have something to, you know, to lighten you up. You have to have either a team, teammate to ice and joke around all the time in, on the ball while they were sitting on the telling jokes. Or I got, I got some very ac academic kids who were talking about I can do pie for 300. Okay, you know, yeah, we, it's really one of these guys way out there. I think he could be a, he's a phys physicist someplace in, in, in Chicago, the physics professor, yeah. He was perfect for that. And he could have been a damn good backstroker too. He only did two minutes for the 200 meters, which is not bad. Back in those days, it was pretty decent fun. But sure. Good. So any more other questions? Things were relating to coaching, but not necessarily the actions and all that. Really, I'm really hard on on, um, on, on relationship, uh, it's uh, something I constantly strive for. You have to yeah, let's, talk, let's you, talk about that. I what John? What strategies did you teach your staff to engage your athletes and, and get to know them better? Well, I tell you what. What I I do a lot. Building rela building relationships, okay. That starts that starts when you sit down with the athlete at home with mom and dad, and on a trail sell the University of Michigan. And this is very interesting, and you're going to see somebody in here. I'm going to talk about. Uh, just so that's the first relationship. That that's mom and dad, and everything is fine, and the brothers and sisters, and the cat and the dog, everything's fine to go to Michigan. Okay, so that's uh, that's very very important. And once they're once they get on the, the team, just like just like when we have we had the nineties, it's like a freight train. It just keeps running and keep going and going. Every three years, some four or five people jump up, go on with life. New people coming in. And I didn't have to do anything about it because the team, for me, the team 
indoctrinated to what acceptable is. Hey, no, we don't go out smoke pill. No, we don't do this after so many times. You stop drinking. We didn't have too many roles. I'm not a role for those people. I, I, I expect them to be more intelligent and, and think about them overall. What does that do for the program? Matter of fact, in Michigan, I took the job. It takes tell you but in order for me to turn around that program, put it in a culture what I not not to build, I have to let go three of the baskets on the team to all the Olympians. But the training was okay, but I did not their attitude away from the pool. That's unacceptable. And if you can't change in a year, you have to find someplace else to go. The next day, the whole team got on the same page, and we ended up winning 11, I think 10 or 11 Big Ten championships consistent, continuously, which culminated with winning an event eventually. But that was just getting rid of the bad apple. That is not the culture you want to coach in. Out of here. And that's uh, and bad, but I have to look at what's best for the whole group. So, uh, you got to have passion to be a coach. That's a good reminder for you. Many young coaches out there, good reminder. I make, make a lot of mistakes because I have so, so, such a passion for the sport. But I'm jumping out of bed every day at 5 o'clock in the morning. My wife doesn't even know what's going on. It's just it's okay, so I can, <laughs> it doesn't matter. It's gone. And, and and I've doing it for 50-some years now, 57 years now, that most of the work I started on 6 o'clock in the morning. And I'm out of bed when I'm ready to go. I love this sport. But don't let it carry to the point I only had one daughter. And guess where I was when she was born? The Olympic Games. No, I was at the high school work at 6 o'clock. <laughs> Olympic Games, I can handle it. Six o'clock morning workout. I asked the nurse, "How much longer? Four o'clock, five? Oh, don't worry about it. Doctor's not here yet. He's a case. Well, he, he can tell the rest of the story and, and open up the pool. Waited for the assistant coach to buy came from Huntington Beach. It took nurse one hour and the wife to go. I mean, we'll go home. I start for a coffee and get up early time so I can read it in the reading if I have to wait. And the nurse comes in if I come up in there. So that could happen. We gotta keep things in perspective, right? Then then my wife and I have courses. I don't know if you looked at the chart yet that, that I gave you. Yeah. My only horse, but we have a mother horse and the horse I missed the, the birth of my horse. Where was I? Practice. No, Colorado Springs at the Olympic training center had to go to the Olympics. So he's like, like two, one, two, I would have liked to be there, one and see the birth of my voice, okay? I think you saw some pictures in there. John, we've, we've all coached that athlete who has tremendous talent, has incredible skills, but might not have the passion to reach their potential. How are we getting inside that athletes uh, uh, I'm going I know where you're going. don't matter I know where you're going and it's really it's it's I, I don't have I I'm sorry I try to eliminate that by watching kids growing up and when they're going to junior nationals at some of these meets and I watch I watch them and watch them how they behave after their race and that's what they can't not look like upset. Yeah, that the coaches, you know, respect, okay. I said, I don't want that, okay. I, I, I kick could be a real fast runner, but I don't take that. I don't want him, and that, that actually is not, not acceptable for me. Now, some coaches don't care about that. They just want the time and the points, and yeah, that's fine. I, that's I, that's not important to me. I think being decent, good citizen, because that's when, you know, swimming is only four years, maybe five or six or so. You gotta move out to the real world. And then, so I I never I, I accepted them as they are, you know. I, I know they could better than that. I have one who's doing unbelievable well and opened up swimming schools, swimming schools all over the country. Matter of fact, he came to Michigan 
after I had announced that I'm going to retire in two years, he still wanted to come back to our coach for two years. And he ended up getting third or fourth at the Olympic trials, almost me. But uh, there's another picture I, I posted in there for you guys. Uh, Davis Tarr, this is about the relationship and connection. Davis Tarr was like a freshman with this particular ball, with PBT, Peter Vanderke. And the goal was because I told him, I'm only going to be there for one day. She said, I said, I'm gone. And I still come to Michigan. Well, he made it to the Olympics, but not the first time. The first time he did make it. And I posted that picture in the house, said he was, and I, and I was smiling and building him up. Anyway, later on, a year later, comes back, made the Olympics. Actually, two years later, he went to Harvard, he went to Oxford University for two years, come back, and decided to swim again, to swim again. Made the Olympic team go to the Olympics. This is what we're here for, okay? The coaches and we build people who lost their dream, but the, the dream is there. We just have to make sure you put in the forefront of the brain and you're going to go for that. And so these are the things that's really challenging and, and fulfilling to us to help them in life uh, to go move on with whatever uh, direction they go. I also hear you. We have hobbies. My wife and I have hobbies. We, we, have, uh, we have horses. And my wife is a rider. I travel from the world. I love it. I love the smell of the fresh manure. That's fine. Go to the farm after practice or after she gets out of uh, the hospital or the med medical school. We meet at the farm and we feed the horse, work the horse, ride the horse, stop at the mom and pop on the way home, get a sandwich and go home. That's, 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 that's a big night for us. Instead of me going home, she said, get on your table. She's preparing meal, especially I'm coming home late. She's already upset. Now I'm not listening to her because I'm reading Swimming World magazine, the sports illustrator, and the sports on the TV. So it's a great years of providing some more coaches. I tell your coaches, find, find a heaven you can do with your wife because that, that's very important, especially. This coming year, the coach is going to be on deck twice as, twice as long as they're supposed to be because you can't have so many. You can have only so many people in the pool. You can have like, this is going to be very challenging for coaches and their coaches. So I have three the really hobbies I have. I, I like to fish and I like to run. And when I was young, I like to uh, surf a lot, uh, surfboarding, okay? And uh, I'll show the picture there for you guys to see eventually. Uh, you got to have a hobby. Swimming is not the only thing. You can always have a little bit of time to get away from it. You need to get away from it. You can miss a workout or two. The pool is going to be there. Don't worry. The time the workout is still going to go. The assistant coach might change your workout. No big deal. Okay, let him write up the workout. You need to enough for my workout. You need to do something different. Call somebody. Especially now what these kids are doing. It's unbelievable. Nobody's watching them. Yep. They're, they're doing it on their own. Accountability. This is life. This is growing up as an adult. I am responsible now. My coach is not here to tell me what to do or many often. And I think this group, this, this is not good for people. Actually, unfortunately, 20, 25 people. But for most, everybody do it in a different way of life. This, this is the new normal. We don't know. What's John, it I wanted to I wanted to ask you uh, some two final questions here. The first one is uh, I've asked all my guests who have been coaches if you could only do three sets for your entire career, what would those three sets be? Uh, one one would be. Uh, one, one would be uh, probably the, uh, 20 to 30, 100 for the long distance people, okay? And then for people swimming 200, 200 and, 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 and 200 and 400, I would give them um, uh, the, uh, the, uh, what I call it, uh, uh, I can help you here because I've heard you say Every set is the main set. Well, every set is the main set. No, but uh, <laughs> I was going to tell you the active rest. That, that, this is my favorite for the last 20, 30 active rest for the 240 people who go. They can go 1650s, 
and in every every uh, fourth one at the race space, if you go if you go a yard, there's going to be 23, and then uh, then the next uh, 12, they go uh, five seconds more rest, then every third one is going to be race space, then they're going to go eight every other. This is this is a this is a challenging but very rewarding second the last four on a minute you have to go all together you've done 16 25 16 15 so at the race pace the faster that would work you know the third one i would do is stand up swim six six fifty six point one fifty if, if it's a hundred to an swimmer okay or, or you do six to hundreds from a saturday warm up warm up and and and, and do, a little teaser and immediately every eight minutes you can get up and you now go at least 94 95 percent of the 200 time if you work on a little uh, 400 pace and then those three workouts i will do that's one one of each each in a, 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 one of one of the each known which we can practice so, like i said i never had a bad taker <laughs> i never had a bad taker other than 1971 I wanted to this this one I've been waiting to ask you all day. What happens first? The women break eight minutes in the eight hundred meter freestyle, or the men break that four minute barrier in the four hundred IM? And we and there will be a woman. I go with the woman. I go with the woman. They do better compared to your threshold. All my all my people, who, for example, Katie Hart. And her best time is, I think, uh, 356. I think that's a, that's a world record. Okay. And based upon that, she should be, she should only go by the 15, 1535 for the 1500, yeah, 1500 meters. And she's already gone 1520. Based upon the threshold, women do better on on endurance okay but they never go fast enough for do the 200 time because the 200 is one they're female they don't have all the power even the men have difficulty the, the best men that i ever coach have very few of them can make that 400 1500 800 and the 200 on my chart that's a challenge <coughs> i don't think i would have one because i'm no longer coaching any one in any period of time John, the last thing I want to ask you today is, when was the first time you said, keep it moving? That's become the John well, that's, that's, a, that's, a, that's a real good one because we do it all the time. That was just one of those, one of those, the active rest we do. When I teach, when you come in an active rest, you go 50, you come in, then a 22-2, look up, get your time. Then immediately, I want you to go easy, slowly swim back. Don't sit on the wall. Not, why? Why, why don't you? Because what happens is if you do three or four of these fifties back to back and have a 50 easy, your body already builds up lactate. So we want that lactate used up. So uh, while you're swimming back easy or swimming easy after a race, your body is using the lactate as a source and they put it back in their prep cycle. It becomes a use usable energy in the body. So lactate is not bad as long as you use it up as you make it. That's why we can swim a T30 straight. Like Tia Ledecky just went 3,000 back, 3,000, uh, 3,000 continuously nonstop, 1930, 1931, 1930, only 57 flat per, per 100 for 3,000. She's the only human on this planet I think is still doing this kind of stuff because Bruce Gamble believes in it. And Bruce Gamble made her a believer because she went for, for uh, from uh, 840 at the Olympics down to what 804 now 803. So work works. That's amen. 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 That's the question. Keep it moving. So I usually yell at these people and come in, don't sit on what we're waiting for, you know. Kiss them. <laughs> want me to kiss you. <laughs> well, get going. Get get I can see things out. John. Comes. Thank you so much for your time today. I, I had probably 50 or 60 text messages from people saying, Mike, can we make this four hours long? 
Uh, I have to go to practice. I gotta get. I gotta get the kids in the water. We're we're open water swimming right now in a lake. So we really appreciate yeah, your time. I, for this. I work with open water swimmers. Also, I do a lot of training camps and cut my altitude and and going to Chula Vista. Also, uh, I'm still involved, but I'm no longer coaching a group group. I'm coaching a national team athletes, a national team training camp situation, and I go visit clubs all over the country. I see how they're treating. I want to meet the athletes. I'll meet the coach. If the main Olympic team has a better relationship with the coach, athlete, and so on. So I'm still busy. Thank God I still have the health. I hope I keep it for a while. John, thanks so much. We are we are so happy to have had you. Um, today's winner of the suit is Nicole Kalp. So we will be sending an email to you. And John, you keep it moving where you are. We'll keep it moving out here, and we'll see you in Omaha. Okay, thank you. Okay. Thanks so much. Everybody. Appreciate it, guys.